Welcome to In the Kitchen with Grace. Today we are making a praline sweet potato casserole. This goes great, honestly, as a side dish with just about any meal, traditional weeknight dinner. Uh, but I am making it for Thanksgiving. We like to make it with Easter. And um, then I just kind of toss it in here and there as well over the course of the year. It is sweet. It is delicious. I love pecans. And so this is just one of my favorite recipes. I have cooked uh, three sweet potatoes. Two were medium size. One was a little bit larger. And they are mostly peeled. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of mash them up. They are fully cooked. So they are soft. I'm using a potato masher. You could use a fork if you really wanted to. You could get your hand mixer out, but I'm not gonna go that route. For this recipe, you are going to need, um, if you don't want to use fresh sweet potatoes, you can use two cans of sweet potatoes. I just prefer to use fresh. Um, you're gonna need a stick and a half of butter, half a cup of sugar, fourth cup of milk, two eggs, a teaspoon of vanilla, going to need the chopped pecans and uh, brown sugar and a little bit of flour. The recipe will be listed below. If you're new, I hope you'll subscribe and stick around. Y'all follow me on Pinterest in the kitchen with Grace one on Pinterest. Um, there is a link up here on my channel as well. Um, you can get all of my recipes and pin them. Uh, have all sorts of good old fashioned country home cooking recipes. All right, this is nice and soft. I think we're mixed, mushed, mashed pretty well. Let's okay, right into my sweet potato mixture. I'm going to do a stick of melted butter. My butter is been sitting out so it's room temperature and I want to go ahead and put it in the microwave um, just for maybe like 20 seconds you don't have to have it melted all the way just enough though so that it kind of just mixes in just right so I'm gonna put that stick of butter right in And then I'm going to go ahead and crack my eggs. I have a little dish here. I'm using farm fresh eggs. So whenever you're using farm fresh eggs, always crack them into a separate little bowl. Never straight into whatever you are making because you never know with a farm fresh egg. We're going to go ahead and pour those in. I need a fourth cup of milk and a half cup of sugar. Let's do the sugar first. And it doesn't have to be precise. It's just about a half a cup there. We'll do a fourth cup of milk. I'm gonna use my half cupper here. Fill that halfway, perfect. All right. And you need a teaspoon of vanilla you've been sticking around a while, you know I like my vanilla. Whenever it calls for a teaspoon, I almost always add a tablespoon, so. Okay, we're gonna mix this nicely. Butter, the sugar, the eggs, and the vanilla all mixed in. Okay, I'm gonna go grab my baking dish. And we're gonna spray it. I'm gonna bake this in the oven at like 350 degrees so you can get your oven warming up. Just gonna pour this in. So again, this was two to this was uh, two medium and one large sized sweet potato, and it definitely makes quite a bit, plenty enough for your crowd, for your guests. This is going to be for Thanksgiving, one of our side dishes along with green bean casserole. Uh, we also are doing blue cheese, walnut, 
honey bread. Oh my gosh, that recipe is so good. So if you're looking for some side dishes to take to your get together, you gotta check out what we have. Okay, and I'm actually going to just use the same bowl that I was using to make the first part of our sweet potato casserole. And I need half a stick of melted butter. It's gonna go, is gonna go for the topping. All right, we are ready to put together the topping for this praline sweet potato casserole. I am just gonna go ahead and use the same bowl I was mixing the first part in. I have uh, five tablespoons of butter melted, and we also need three-fourths cup of chopped pecans, um, three-fourths cup of brown sugar, and half a cup of flour. Okay, we're gonna pour that in. And then we need half a cup of flour. And then our pecans. We're putting the dry ingredients together first. I'm gonna kind of mix this together. This is basically like candying your pecans here. And then we're going to add our butter. Almost looks like we're making cookie dough. Okay, we're going to grab our baking dish with the potatoes in it. And then you're going to just go ahead and gently pour you're topping on to your potatoes. And then I use a finger and my spoon here and kind of spread it around. And this will continue to melt because it's brown sugar and butter in there. And this will make a really nice, sweet, but crunchy caramelized top to your sweet potato casserole. We go. We are going to go put that in the oven. Welcome back to In the Kitchen with Grace. Today, I am doing what I call the beginner's college student's guide to making a very easy side dish for any family holiday get together. Uh, we're doing green bean casserole. It only requires a few ingredients. It's also a really cheap side dish to make. Uh, we are doing an early Thanksgiving dinner, so I have a whole bunch of stuff going on in my oven. We have blue cheese, walnut honey thyme bread. We have a praline sweet potato casserole. We have a green bean casserole growing on, and I'm actually going to do a brown sugar honey ham. So it is two cans of cream of mushroom soup, two cans of green beans. I personally like to use the French style. Instead of the regular cut green beans, you're going to want um, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. You're gonna need some milk. You're gonna need some black pepper. And I call these jerky onions. Not sure where you're from. We're from the Midwest. We call them jerky onions. Um, but it is your golden crispy onions. They're kind of um, look like they've been fried like that. You're going to want those. And uh, yeah, let's just uh, jump in. So I am going to do the liquid ingredients in one bowl first. We're going to start with the cream of mushroom soup. This is one of those recipes that is really hard to mess up. Basically, you just have to get the texture, the creaminess just right, and make sure you don't burn the topping. And that's all there is to it. I'm actually going to start with one and a half cans of the cream of mushroom soup. And we are going to do half a cup of milk. You can always add more liquid ingredients. So... Always start out just a little bit less or not quite all of it to begin with. Mix this together. I'm actually gonna grab my whisk. Grab my black pepper while I was at it. 
We're just gonna gently mix this together. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a splash of Worcestershire sauce. So this gives it just a little hint. It makes you go, I wonder what that flavor is. It's Worcestershire. It's probably about a full teaspoon. Okay, let's mix it together really well. I'm gonna grab a bigger bowl here. Put our green beans in. And then we're going to pour our wet ingredients into the green beans. You're saving those dirty onions for the top, for a nice crunchy top. Gently mix this all together. I like to fold it. It makes it a little bit easier. Add in our pepper. Pepper goes really well with green beans, so do a little extra. And I start with like a handful of the jerky onions. Sprinkle them around top. And just a little bit more there. And then I use my spoon and I actually kind of press them in. And then you're gonna bake this for about 10 minutes. Uh, and when these jerky onions start to crunch up and get golden brown, then you add the rest on top for the perfect crunchy top. So for Friendsgiving, we are doing a ham. We are doing praline sweet potato casserole. And um, I always like to do something homemade and then something sort of store-bought and super simple to add with it. And so um, if you're having turkey, uh, I found a lemon thyme stuffing mix at Aldi's. Talk about an Aldi find. Lemon and thyme goes so good with turkey. And when I actually make my turkey, I like to sprinkle the thyme on top. And I also like to um, add lemon slices inside your turkey. It just gives it an amazing flavor. Um, and so I am just going to go ahead and make this stuffing mix. If you are new to making stuffing, this is like the easiest thing in the world. Sounds really silly, but I'm throwing all these side dish options in here to help give you some ideas of things that are quick and easy for you to take to your family get together. So I have one and a half cups of water here in my pot. I need half a stick of butter, just like that. We're going to let this melt and boil, and then I'm going to add in the breading mix, and then we let that fluff for a few minutes. All right, so she is boiling up nicely, so I'm going to add my stuffing mix in. You want to mix it together thoroughly. You want all of the breading to get wet. I'm going to turn the stove off. And then I'm going to remove it from the hot burner and let it sit here for about five minutes and then we'll fluff it up and it'll be ready to serve. Welcome back to In the Kitchen with Grace. Today I am making a super tasty blue cheese walnut pull apart bread recipe. And so I have got walnuts, I have got some thyme. If you have fresh thyme, use that. Um, it's fall here, so our herb garden is done for the year. I didn't bring the herbs inside. And um, I have some blue cheese that I've got crumbles uh, that are ready. You can use a, a real block, full block of blue cheese, and then just kind of um, slice and crumble that up. And I'm also going to toss in a little bit of Parmesan as well. My quick rising yeast bread 
going here and I will be working on that here in just a minute. I will link to the full quick recipe for how to make the actual bread, uh, the bread dough using quick yeast and um, flour and salt, super easy. Right now, while I'm waiting for my yeast mixture to continue to activate, I'm going to chop up my walnuts and I've got about a cup's worth here of walnuts and I'm just going to kind of chop them up a little bit into smaller pieces. Today I am going to do a quick rise instant yeast uh, bread. I'm actually going to be making a blue cheese walnut pull apart bread. And so I'm going to get the bread recipe going for that. And I know um, if you're kind of newer to baking, you often wonder, how do I use yeast? How do I make simple, easy bread recipes? Um, so this one is going to use Quick Rise Red Star Yeast Packet. I'm gonna just use one packet here. I'm gonna pour it into our bowl. And then I am going to get a fourth cup of water. And you could also use milk, like scalding milk almost, if you would like, but I'm going to use warm water. Oops. I'm gonna put that in. And then I'm actually going to get about a half a teaspoon of sugar, pinch of sugar or so. Okay. And then we're going to mix this together a little bit. We're going to kind of let this foam up just a little bit. You can see it's kind of foaming here a little. So for this bread recipe, um, you're actually going to want to use in total one and a half cups of very warm water. So I always do the first fourth cup water with the yeast packet and mix it together, just kind of get it started. And then after about two or three minutes as it started to foam, I add the rest of my water. So that other one and a quarter cups of warm water. And then we let that sit for about 10 to 15 minutes total while it's kind of foaming and bubbling. And you can kind of see that it is definitely bubbling up there a little bit. So I am now going to start preparing some of the other things for my bread recipe. I'm going to get a bigger bowl. Actually, I'm gonna grab a bit bigger bowl than this one, I think. Let's use this one right here. And so for this bread recipe, um, we are going to use three cups of bread flour. So I've got one, two, three. Now, if you're into using sourdough um, or would like to try sourdough bread, I do have a sourdough starter tutorial video. I'll link to that. Um, I also have a easy pie crust and a easy, quick and easy biscuit recipes. So you can check those out as well. I think I have them all under my baking um, playlist. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of salt to add into my flour. You can use regular salt or sea salt. I'm actually going to use a little bit of Himalayan pink salt here. And I'm just going to kind of sprinkle it in. You want about mm, a fourth to a half teaspoon of salt. My um, blue cheese walnut bread, the flavors of that, salt goes really good with it. So it just kind of depends on what kind of bread you're going to make. If I was making a sweeter bread, I would add a little bit less salt. I'm going to mix the salts in there together. And if you're going to add some seasonings, um, rosemary, thyme, parsley, um, whatever, like herbs, this is the time to add them into your mixture. And I am going to be doing thyme for mine. So I'm going to add some thyme. And I'm just actually going to kind of sprinkle it in and eyeball it. 
probably about a half a teaspoon there of thyme. Just kind of mix that in a little bit. So it's been about probably 35 minutes or so and my dough has risen. It's kind of doubled in size. And because we're doing pull apart bread, you don't have to let it like completely fully rise. You don't want like an actual poofy loaf of bread. I'm going to get my hands a little bit floury to help keep the dough from sticking to me. And what we're going to do is we're going to get it out of the bowl here. And I'm kind of just working flour onto the top here just a little bit so I can actually grab it. And you can do this a couple of ways. You can do um, like a ring and go in a circle. I'm kind of going to do some twists. You could also do some little rolls. But I'm going to take my sticky dough here and I'm going to kind of just twist around just like that. Kind of pull it Need a little more flour on my hands. That is a good dough when it is sticky. We're gonna go just like that. And I'm gonna twist and twist here. And I'm actually gonna kind of put these right next to each other so that the uh, toppings really get in there good. I'm just kind of twisting here. All right. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, and then we are going to grab our toppings. We have walnuts, blue cheese crumbles, and parmesan. And I like to kind of do half and half here. We're going to just kind of Start with one layer of each and then come back and do another layer of each. And you kind of want to press the toppings into the top of your bread a little bit. Here we go. Get some walnuts in there. Push those in. Sprinkle a little Parmesan. And then we go back to the blue cheese. This is the perfect bread to take along to holidays and gatherings. It just pairs so well with just about any meal. And so if you're looking for ideas of something to take to Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, this will do it for you. It is a crowd pleaser. Sprinkle a little more Parmesan. Now, here is a key ingredient and it goes so well with the blue cheese. It's honey. And we're gonna just kind of drizzle, get that piece of blue cheese back in there. We're gonna drizzle the honey. You don't wanna go crazy. You just want a hint of it. And it blends so well with the thyme, the walnuts, the Parmesan, perfect. Okay, we're gonna go put that in the oven. And here is our finished blue cheese, walnut thyme, pull apart bread. It smells so good, you guys. This is a must add to your meal plan. I am going to pair it with my um, creamy Italian penne pasta with sausage and I'm probably going to add in my creamy pea salad that has um, salami and cheddar cheese in it. Oh, it'll be delicious. Thank you all. I hope you'll subscribe and stick around and we'll see you next time.